good afternoon. This is Richard Shu, uh, host of Shu Untied. Uh, today, I'm really thrilled to have with me as my guest, Kalpana Srinivasan, who's the managing partner of Sussman Godfrey. Kalpana, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me, Richard. Really excited to be here. Did I get that pronunciation right? You did. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Spot on. Spot on. Well, of course, I interview, have interviewed your predecessor, Steve Sussman, and so sorry to hear about what happened to him, but it's also great to see you have uh, taken on the mantle and, and continuing his good work. It was a uh, you know enormous loss, obviously for the firm, but I I think for the legal profession broadly, um, Steve was a titan of the bar in so many respects. For sure. Uh, and he just left a huge legacy behind him, so we're very fortunate to have that and to really try to practice law in his mold, in the way he taught us to, uh, and and those legacies and traditions we carry on every day. So his the impact that he has had on the firm, on the legal profession, on the commitment of people to civil jury trials is um, is not quantifiable, but it's enormous. Totally. So tell me, uh, before you took on this managing partner role, tell me a little bit about what kind of practice you had developed uh, back when you were still doing it full time. Well, I actually am still practicing full time. Ah. So <laughs> then and now, <laughs> um, I practice uh, primarily in the area of intellectual property and antitrust. Okay. Um, and most of my work is in the plaintiff side. Uh -huh. So I represent um, inventors, companies that are patent holders, um, trade secret holders. Uh, I've represented classes of music recording artists in their copyright disputes um, and indirect and direct purchasers and antitrust class actions as some examples of the kind of cases I've handled. Is your plaintiff and antitrust about 50-50 or does it weigh have more heavily one than the other? Uh, the, I would say on the IP side, I have more cases on the intellectual property side. Mm -hmm. um, we have a really robust plaintiff side patent practice here at the firm and trade secret cases, which um, have been on the rise and is a very robust area of IP practice. So mm -hmm. that dominates um, the work that I do day to day. Uh, the antitrust work is, is fascinating and challenging and often long running um in trying to get those results and and typically brought on behalf of classes so you have the added layer of getting those cases certified mm -hmm. uh so the ip cases we you know we handle a lot of them and and have really discovered that because patent cases and trade secret cases are so likely to be trial bound mm -hmm. um that they're well served by having trial counsel involved and mm -hmm. uh, that's kind of how we made our inroads into the practice and it remains a big part of our work today mm -hmm. Is this the same practice you started off with when you first started Sussman or has it kind of evolved over time? Uh, well, one of the unique features of the firm and, and really part of Steve's um, vision is that young lawyers who start at the firm don't have a specialty. There aren't formal practice groups. Mm. Um, they are encouraged and even required to try different practices. Um, in fact, I tried two very large defense side class actions as a junior lawyer at the firm, as an associate at the firm. Mm. So I really got to try my hand at a lot of different things. Um, but before I went to law school, I was actually a reporter, a journalist, and I wrote a lot about um, the advancements in telecom and media um, at that time, the rollout mm. of high-speed broadband. <laughs> and so <laughs> I came into the practice with an interest in technical mm. subject matter. Mm. Um, and so I sort of gravitated towards that as I became more senior and as I became a partner. Um, so I would say that, you know, as an associate, I got the opportunity to work on some types of matters that I don't today, mm -hmm. um, particularly more defense work. Uh, but as a partner, I really have spent the bulk of my time in the area that I'm in now. Mm -hmm. Did you find that you really liked the patent, the technical patent reading and claims? Did you find you liked that right away or did it take a little while to kind of get into it? I really enjoyed it in part 
the challenge of having to master something mm -hmm. uh, to even get to the level of being able to be a good lawyer and explain it well. Mm -hmm. um, when I was a reporter, uh, I was covering telecom. And although I was doing it for a consumer audience, I, I worked for the AP and you have mm -hmm. to make everything very broad and consumer friendly because your audience is broad. I really had to understand things at a, a deeper level for my own purposes. And so I found myself learning about co-location and the last mile and copper loops. And I just discovered that, um, you know, sometimes diving into that level of detail, mm -hmm. that there, that is, is a reward unto itself. You mm -hmm. really learn about something fascinating mm -hmm. um, before you figure out how to make it translatable. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I really, it have always enjoyed that challenge. And mm. I think it's made the practice a little invigorating for me in a different mm. way. Mm. Um, our clients have important, innovative technology across so many different sectors, whether it's analytics or some kind of high-end software, um, product-based hardware, um, medical devices. So it's it's been a truly fascinating journey to learn that and then mm. to learn mm how to advance those cases under mm -hmm. the law. Yeah, it sounds like a really the perfect training ground for, for the kind of stuff you do now, having to explain, you know, translating technical things to juries and whatnot. And I mean, it really sounds like the perfect training ground. Very much so, because at the end of the day, um, many, you know, as I said, many of these cases are being tried. And so you are going to a jury talking to them about why it matters mm -hmm. effectively. And that's mm -hmm. often what you're doing as a journalist. Mm -hmm. There's mm -hmm. something that's occurred and something that's happened. And the way that you convey your story is to explain why it's important to your audience. Mm -hmm. um, and that's often what we're leaving jurors with. Uh, they may not um, be able to decipher source code or get in the weeds of those aspects of the case, but we are trying to give them a strong understanding of why it's important to enforce these property rights and what has happened to, to violate them. Mm -hmm. um, so I have found them to be really, really well complementary skills. Mm -hmm. And the other thing is when you're writing and reporting, you interface with people so much. You mm -hmm. talk to them, you interview them, often you're building a story from the ground up. And I found that that translated well for me into practice. I like dealing with people. I like working with witnesses. Um, of course, the law is paramount, but I think the ability to really tell a story and to develop fact testimony is so critical. Um, and having that relationship with witnesses and knowing what to get out of a witness is, is a really important skill for the short term of a case, but also eventually for how it plays out at trial. Mm -hmm. Now, tell me a little bit about how you got into this role of managing partner of the firm. That's obviously a very big role. It's a big honor to, I'm sure, to have been asked or elected for that role. Tell me a little bit about how, how that happened. Uh, usually people who get take those roles aren't usually, you know, seeking those roles. So <laughs> how did that uh, happen? Well, it, it came... Uh, because of the unfortunate passing of Steve, uh -huh. um, which uh, was in 2020. And yeah. um, because Steve was a forward looking, both in his practice, his ideas about the law and in his administration of the firm, there was a plan in place for how we would handle um, having uh, elected managing partners as opposed to founding man managing partners, which is uh -huh. a different thing. Yeah. So after his passing, um, we had an election and I was elected to the role. I was really so happily surprised at how much people um, wanted to have uh, a leader who is in a different office. I'm not mm -hmm. Houston based, I'm based mm -hmm. in Los Angeles, who mm -hmm. is um, maybe bringing a different view to where the firm is headed for the future. Mm -hmm. um, but I also, I think it's also a testament to the firm being a very dynamic organization mm -hmm. that this is the will of our partners yeah. um, and reflected where our partners views are about the firm. Yeah. Um, I'm a born and bred Sussman lawyer. I have spent my entire career at the firm and I was very involved in developing our Los Angeles office. When I joined the office, it was very small. Hmm. It was uh, four lawyers and 
Um, I think having had that experience of building and growing an office really helped position me to be able to take on the broader role of um, administrating the firm. Mm -hmm. And of course, I'd been involved in the executive committee and other committees at the firm. But I think it says a lot about the kind of firm we are, that um, we are nimble, we're agile, we're um, very forward thinking about where we will be in the future. Yeah, and, sure. yeah. um, you know, in a lot of ways, having that succession plan in place and an election of, of a new leader reflected that. Mm-hmm. So how much time are you spending on management versus practicing? I, I, I mean, obviously it's gotta be taking up some time. You can't be practicing. I'm sure you're not practicing full time, I'm guessing. Um, I have all my cases and clients that I had and I'm oh. part of our role Um, especially in a practice where I do a lot of risk sharing with my clients is vetting new cases and talking Mm -hmm. about new potential matters. Mm -hmm. I would say that some things that I might have been um, personally involved in, I probably have other team members taking a first run at (laughs) Mm -hmm. um, so that I have more capacity and I'm able to work on firm issues. Um, I don't know what the exact breakdown is because it does depend a little bit on time of year. Our end of year and beginning of year are skewed uh, heavily in terms of time spent on the firm because of the forward year planning and um, taking care of the end of year compensation. Um, but I would say on a day-to-day basis, I, you know, my 70% of my time is still spent practicing. Oh, wow. Um, and uh, 65, 70, somewhere in there. Yeah. Um, or maybe it's just that there are more hours that have, are in the day now. <laughs> well, how, how, are, how are you enjoying it so far? I mean, is it, are you finding that you're liking it or is it fun and different or how would you describe it? I really enjoy it. I feel like it's um, flexing a different part of your brain. Mm -hmm. Uh, Just thinking about organization, thinking about how to both uh, motivate and encourage Mm -hmm. and direct people. Um, You have that in a in a sort of micro level when you're dealing with the trial team, but it's a totally different thing when you're talking about an organization Mm -hmm. um, that has lawyers, that has staff members, that has different people who are playing an important role to our future. Mm -hmm. Um, And we're also we've we are really a mid-sized firm now. At some point in the past, we were maybe more of a boutique, but we have grown in a very organic um, and I think very healthy way. And so it's exciting to think about how we are charting a path for the, what the firm looks like now and mm. where it's going to be in the future. And, mm. and so it's, um, I, I found that, you know, sometimes you're working hard on some case issue and I actually like being able to, uh, shift and work on firm issues. And mm-hmm. again, flex this other part of my brain that's thinking about, Um, some of our big picture uh, initiatives or some of the um, firm management efforts that we've undertaken. Mm -hmm. Uh, And then when you want to put a pause on that, you can go back uh, knee deep to editing a brief or getting ready (laughs) for an argument. Um, So I found it really stimulating. And um, you are thinking about these different aspects of communication and interfacing and dealing with people that uh, I, I think is really, for me, has been really positive. Yeah, yeah. Well, what are sir, a couple of your kind of priorities or strategic initiatives that you're working on, you know, during your, your term there? Well, we've had a very distinctive culture in the firm. I think the Sussman has a, a brand and a culture associated with it. And we really do maintain that we're a firm that is largely now made of homegrown partners Um, people who have been with the firm for very long periods of time, some since the firm's founding. Mm -hmm. Uh, And as you grow as an institution, um, how do you preserve that uh, while also modifying it to reflect your change and growth? We have broader practice areas. We have more partners bringing in different types of work. Um, At the same time, we have some principles that we've been able to really safeguard and hold on to and that's been very great for the institution Mm -hmm. we have a very democratic system we all vote on cases that we take on a contingency or where we have some risk element every lawyer from the associate who started last week to the managing partner um we are largely um, close to a one-to-one 
firm. Mm. Um, we've remained that way and we are not, you know, moving in a direction of being leveraged or structured differently. So I, I think the um, real initiative for us in this moment is what do we need to modify and what do we need to develop as we grow, um, again, in a very natural, organic way, mm -hmm. but still really try to hold on to that feeling that we are mm -hmm. getting, we're developing um, lawyers to become trial lawyers, stand-up lawyers, um, that we're getting our young lawyers the experience they need to be um, successful and to be able to go out and market and develop business. Mm -hmm. um, and then I would say for me, I think ex expanding our brand is absolutely a, a forefront of a personal initiative for me. Mm -hmm. um, we have found that there are so many different types of clients that are looking for firms that can come in and try a case or who they want to bring in for a bet, bet the company type matter. Um, and we want to make sure they know who we are and how to find us and how we can serve them. Uh, and so I, that has been a, certainly part of what I've been doing as well mm, in this mm, role. Interesting. Um, and then, you know, finally making sure that we are giving um, lots of young lawyers the opportunity to um, join our ranks and to become the kind of lawyers that Steve certainly would have wanted them to be mm -hmm. um, learning the way that we practice and 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 really trying to focus on outcomes mm -hmm. because I do think that is where we see ourselves um, maybe a little bit different than some places mm -hmm. in the market mm -hmm. having as grown up as a contingent firm. Right. Well, as the firm does grow and your responsibilities will obviously get bigger, do you think at some point you will have to give up your practice or is it your goal to always maintain a pretty strong practice while you're doing this management role? Right now, I believe that that's really both what well, but best serves the firm and mm -hmm. what I personally would want. Um, mm -hmm. I believe it's allowed me to be a more effective leader. And I think in our firm, it has made it... Um, so that a managing partner can lead and can relate to the kinds of issues that a lot of the partners are bringing to you. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm often dealing with partners coming to me explaining how they're trying to make some new client relationship work, or they're exploring some kind of business um, fee deal with a client that we haven't done before, or um, you know, something along those lines. And I feel that my being out um, in both out litigating, but also out developing my own business and, and developing new clients allows me to better understand what they're trying to accomplish. And I think better align with them. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's served the firm well in our case, um, given our model and the types of work that is our most lucrative for us to have managing partners who are out and doing what our partners do. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, as the firm grows, I'm sure that we may need more layering to that, including you know, we have a fantastic executive director and um, her support needed to help us manage and execute. But there is really, uh, I always felt it with Steve, there was something so motivating about seeing your leader out um, going to meet new clients, going out to look for new cases, talking to new prospective, um, uh, prospective co-counsel, uh, and really being in the thick of what we do. Uh, and Steve did that and in a way that really made you motivated to follow. Mm -hmm. And I do think a leader can serve that important role, which is to model for the rest of the firm what lawyers should be doing day to day. Well, Kalpana, I really appreciate your taking the time. I know you've got a super busy schedule, so I so much appreciate this. And I have no doubt that Steve, wherever he's at, is smiling that we were able to have this conversation. And I'm sure he's very pleased with how the firm is doing. Well, thank you so much, Richard, and for your kind words about Steve and your own um, remembrances of the firm and interactions with him. And uh, it's been delightful to talk to you. And I'm glad that you were able to have me. Thanks so much. This is Kalpana Srinivasan and Richard Shu. Thanks. <laughs>